hopefully some of you are still enjoying it. Uh, I'm having a whale of a time, so that's all that matters really, isn't it? If you remember in the last video, we put all the springs in place, we tied them down, I put them on the back, and this is on the seat. Since the last video, I then put this scrim of hessian over the top, and I've added a couple of bits of extra webbing here on the bottom. And there's a very clever reason for that, and we'll talk about that later. But it's important that we get that bit of webbing in there now. Now we come to the, the part of the upholstery that I really enjoy. This is the first stuffing. As the name suggests, this is the first layer of stuffing, and it's where we start to build the shape. I sometimes talk in terms of sculpture when I'm doing this, and I, I see it in that way. Uh, you may not, but doesn't matter really does it <laughs> we, we can agree to disagree on some things but I see it as a sculpture because what you're doing is sculpting the chair uh, to suit the body why have a chair that can suit anybody when you can have a chair that absolutely fits you that's the important bit so without any further ado let's get on with it so we need some hessian to go over the top of the springs first of all if you look on the websites or the catalogues, you discover hessian comes on lots of different salts, lots of different weights. This is 12 ounce hessian. I tend to only use the one salt because it means I only have to keep one salt in stock. And we're going to start by just roughly getting it into place. Make sure we've got enough to do the job that we need. Yep, I can get enough out of that piece. So I'm just going to tack that into place. Now the first problem we come across is some idiot has insisted on putting a, an arm here and we need to get this fabric round it and that's there's a technique you have to learn and we might as well learn it now for which you will need some method of marking pencil felt tip pen push your fingers in and you can feel where that bit of wood is and then mark it with your pen. So you can see it's there. I'm now going to cut towards that, but I'm not going to go right to it. I'm going to stop a little way before, and now I'm going to cut a V shape. One up, one down. We fold that bit back and there you are we've just gone round we've just gone round our corner. Fold these bits over and that gives them a bit of strength and then all we've got to do is tack that round and we just carry on do, we'll do exactly the same on the other side and then that's not a bad job so we've now got hessian all the way around now you could sit on that now and I'd be lying if I said I hadn't but you'll discover despite the fact what you tell yourself it's not very comfortable you can feel every single spring I think it's fair to say it's supportive but it's not comfortable and what you will notice is it sort of curves off on all the edges. I mean, there's a big curve here. There's a big curve there. And it's sort of very bobbly. Uh, same on the sides. So what we now need to do is to sort of tighten up those edges. And we need to sew something into here, across there, um, that will sort of make it look a lot nicer. So let's start with the back. I'll show you the technique, and then we'll apply it to all the other bits and pieces. So we get our piece of hessian just sort of slightly below, bear in mind this is the top, so we're gonna go that way, um, of where the curve off starts. And again, we're not talking quality sewing here. We just want to run a quick hem just to sew these bits together. Ooh. 
and it's never going to be easy because there's springs in the way. But just run a line all the way down. So the next step is to sew a series of loops. And you'll notice I'm following the line of the curve of our back. So with the row of loops in place, we now use this stuff, which is black fibre. It's shredded coconut, which has been dyed black or fireproofed. And we just put little bundles of it underneath our ties. Tease it out as we go. We want to make sure we don't get any sort of lumps or bumps. And I'm going to go all the way along. Now fireproofing is quite important on furniture. Years ago, before furniture was fireproofed, it used to be a source of an awful lot of high house fires. You know, people would, well in those days, people smoked. So the people would drop their cigarettes onto the furniture and of course you would just set the furniture alight and away you would go. People don't smoke in the same way, but you still need to have fireproof furniture. And there's different levels of fireproofing depending on whether it's going to be used in a domestic setting or whether it's you know in a bar or a, you know, some form of public building. If you look on the websites or the books where you get your upholstery supplies from, they'll have a lot of information about it. It changes from country to country, I feel sure. But that's the, the regs in England. And like all of these health and safety regs they're there for our protection our safety so it's not a bad thing really is it so I've got this all the way along so what I'm now going to do so the next bit is you want one of these long mattress needles and you need to feel where that sort of starts. And it's a double-ended needle. As you come back, you go round three times and then pull it back through. And that creates that little knot there, which then allows you to lock it off. And you just keep going all the way along and as you can see i'm starting to get now an edge so i should go along and go all the way around across the top and then i'll go down the sides and then we'll do across the front and away we go now you can see here i've gone around three sides and i've stitched it in from the side and we're starting to shape you can see the shape of the chair that we're trying to get to I mean, it's still got a very long way to go, but you can start to see where we're going. It's a very tactile thing as you do this. I rather like it, but I mustn't do it too much. So now I'm going to do exactly the same across the front, and I'm going to build this up. And I may have to build this up a couple of times um, because this is quite a big gap. But I want to follow this line all the way around and sculpt. Oh, I'm getting pretentious. But you understand what I mean. And then when I've done that, then we'll start moving on to the next bit. But let's get this bit done first. That's going to take a little while. Well, I'm finally reaching the end of doing this bit. It's been a long job. Um, the back was relatively simple. But you remember at the front, we had quite a big slope to deal with. Um, and so this is actually the second layer of this that I've done. We call this a roll. And not only is it two layers, but on this layer there's two, la two layers of stitching as well. But you put all that lot together and you end up with a good solid 
edge and it's a nice edge I have seen versions of this done I'm thinking particularly of a Victorian chair that I did a while back um, and what they had on that one was a piece of Malacca cane um, and I did consider using a bit of cane or a piece of steel or something um, I may yet choose to use it but they would, would sort of fit they will be sewn across the front here and if I now turn this sideways what you can see is we've got a lovely edge and it's straight down there and it's reasonably flat I mean obviously it does bend down but we've still got this bit to pull back so at the moment but it's solid that's a nice solid front that's not going very far and all that is is hessian and black fiber so i'm now doing one more of these rolls and this one is at the bottom of the back so it's called a lumber roll for obvious reasons because it supports the lumbar region of your back and it just brings the bottom of the chair or the back of the chair a little bit further forward gives you a little bit more support you can see what I mean about really sculpting these chairs can't you and if we just add all this little lot together we are going to end up with a chair that holds you and hugs you so as you can see we now have our lumbar bar and that makes quite a difference so the next task is to cover the whole of this now with padding again it's black fiber um, I've already sewn in all of the loops to do it I've done the loops across here and I've also started to do the sides as well once we've done this we'll then put some hessian on it and then we'll move to the back but let's get this done first of all so exactly the same process as before we get our piles of black fibre generous handfuls and we go all the way across filling it up all the loops and if you're clever you tease it out as you go which makes it much easier later on the last thing you want is sort of knots so I shall go ahead and fill the whole of this now with black fibre and then we'll put a layer of hessian over the top so now you can see we've got the final covering on and I put a or I've sewn a roll all the way around the outside including the arms all the way across the back and it tightens this up quite considerably this is going to be the final hessian after this we then start getting into much softer finer fabrics um, but that's really quite nice so now we're going to do a new style of sewing and I've drawn two lines down the middle of the seat and I just want to put a couple of stitches in from underneath come up go down and then we'll just tie them off i just want to do about th well probably three would do it just to pull this center down just to stop it going anywhere so i'm going to go right through from here what i've done is i've just put a stitch in there so i should put one there one there And that will just tie this little lot down I'm gonna do something different on the back but I'm gonna save that for slightly later on there's our six stitches holding the middle and that's tightened that up quite considerably that really is very firm which is just how we like it so all that remains to do now is to test it that's the best bit Ooh. 
Well, I have to say that's rather good. I'm rather enjoying this bit. Well, that's the end of this video. I'm just going to sit here and enjoy this rather comfortable chair um, and start thinking about the next one. Hopefully you've enjoyed it while you're waiting for the next one. Why don't you go and have a look at some of the other ones? You never know, you might enjoy those as well. I do remember to press the subscribe button. It makes quite a difference to my life. See you next time. Bye-bye.